Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky. We are expecting our first frost in the next couple days. So I am going to harvest all the tomatillos that I can. I left these plants out here as long as possible. And so today, anything that is remotely ready to harvest, I'm gonna grab because I know in the next two, three days, they will be dead. So they've had as long as they can to mature out here. I'm gonna harvest the tomatillos and then we're gonna go harvest some cilantro. And we're gonna go inside and make a bunch of salsa verde in a way I've never made before. We're gonna change things up a bit. I feel like that's the theme of this year is trying new things and seeing if there's a better way we like it. My dog decided to come out here with me this morning. So you might see him running around. That's Tibro. So we have two dogs, Tibro and Orbit. Oop, want that one. It's raining out here, so I want to be as quick as possible. Salsa Verde is one of Josh's favorite things that I make. So I wanna make sure that I try to get as much of it on the pantry shelf as possible. We only have two pints left from last year. I've been collecting these all throughout the growing season and throwing them in the freezer. And so we're gonna combine what we've already harvested with today's harvest. Some of these tomatillos are really small. I'm used to them being about three times that size, but small is better than none. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this cilantro directly into my colander so we can just wash it right when we get inside and put it into our pot. Frost also means I need to get those pepper plants in the grow room so they don't freeze. But here is our harvest today, absolutely stunning. I will for sure be doing cilantro in the fall because this is such beautiful cilantro. So the first thing I need to do, I might as well get some tomatillos on the stove cooking down because I normally work with all fresh tomatillos. Well, I have the majority frozen and I need to measure out how many tomatillos I have so that my canning recipe is got the proper proportions of acidic food with the onions, which is not acidic food, and the lemon juice and vinegar. So what I'm gonna do differently this year is cook them on the stove, which is actually what the recipe calls for. Normally I roast them in the oven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start cooking the tomatillos blend them up and then I can measure them and we can put everything back in the pot and get it all cooked up. So here I've got my 30 quart pot. I have more tomatillos in here actually as well. This bag has some frozen jalapenos and cayenne peppers and I'm just gonna throw those in there. Once we get all this blended up, I'll taste it so I know how spicy it is and then I can adjust the seasonings as needed. Today we're also going to be preserving up a bunch of onions. And so I'm gonna reuse these bags that I froze these tomatillos in. So there's two, four, six, eight peppers in here. So I'll remember that. These are already washed. I washed them before I froze them. So I wouldn't have to do it once they're frozen. Unlike a tomato, you do not have to peel your tomatillos. You can just throw them in the sauce and blend that it all up together. So that's really nice that this salsa is super easy to make. So I need this colander for our tomatillos because I need to wash the tomatillos and peel them. So we've got our tomatillos here. Tomatillos have this paper coating 
and they're really sticky on the inside. I'm not sure what causes that, but I wanna make sure I wash all that off. And I wanna make sure if there's any dirt or anything that we wash that off as well, just because they've obviously been outside and they need to be washed. So I'll compost the paper skins. It already smells incredible. Tomatillos have kind of a limey flavor. They're very mild, but so delicious. This is the last big preservation project we have to do from 2023's garden, or I should say we get to do, not have to do. There is a purple variety of tomatillos that I've considered growing because they're absolutely stunning. Oops, we lost one. I'll grab in just a second. But I had this thought that if you were to turn it into salsa, would the purple ones kind of turn a weird brown color? So if any of you guys have any recommendations on that, let me know if you've ever tried growing purple tomatillos. We do need to run downstairs and get a bunch of onions for our preservation projects, plus we need onions for this recipe. I think I got all of the papers off. So now I can wash these and get these in our pot. Josh is in here and he's excited that I'm making salsa verde. So I can already smell the pepper at the bottom of this, so I need to get this stirred up so that it doesn't burn. Oh, this is actually perfect. So it kind of charred my peppers at the bottom of the pot, which is awesome, because I just, I didn't stir it while I was cleaning the husks off. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start chopping a bunch of onions. But before I can chop onions, I need to run downstairs and go grab a bunch of them. So we need onions for this recipe, plus we're gonna make a bunch of caramelized onions to preserve in a way that you all had recommended. And I did a bunch of research and it's supposed to be the perfect way to do it. And so let me run downstairs and I'll be right back, get my slippers back on, and we will start processing onions. I have an idea of how to get these onions chopped quickly. While I was down there, I grabbed a whole box of onions and I grabbed lemon juice because we're gonna need lemon juice for this canning recipe. So I grabbed two bottles actually because I wasn't sure exactly how much we were gonna need. Okay, so we need onions for caramelized onions, freeze dried onions, just frozen diced onions and for this recipe. I am gonna be following the recipe in my canning cookbook. I can link all my canning supplies and food preservation and kitchen supplies down in the description box if you are interested in anything that I'm gonna be using today. For every five and a half cups of tomatillos, we need one cup of onions. I have no idea how many tomatillos we have in here. Probably 20 to 30. So I'm gonna pull out my food processor. This is what I'm thinking. Because I'm gonna be blending the salsa anyway, and we're gonna be making caramelized onions for the freezer, I think I can use my food processor and I can use the slicing attachment. I never use the slicing attachment. So I can use this if I can find my slicing attachment, not my chopping attachment. Hmm. I gotta go look in the garage. I'll be right back. I found it. I've got a room in my garage where I keep my cooking equipment that I don't use regularly. And I kept this, which is great. So let me go wash this off and we're gonna use this to process quite a bunch of the onions today. So I got a big bowl to put our sliced onions in. I probably need a bowl for compost too. Food processor out. Let me see how I wanna set this up to be as efficient as possible. So I need my cutting board here by my onions and then probably put the food processor on this side. I've never used this slicing attachment before so I'm curious to see how it goes. This in there. Oh, you know what? The hole for my KitchenAid is kind of small. 
that needs to be stirred. I just put the lid on that pot so that the steam can trap in there and start cooking down those tomatillos so we, we can blend them up and then weigh them. So let's just try this. So this is actually gonna be my compost bowl. So I know we're gonna have a lot of compost. So what if I core it? It'd probably be faster to cut it in half, peel it, and then core it. Is that gonna fit? No. This might not even be worth using my food processor. Well, I've already gotten it dirty, so I'm gonna use it for at least the onions we need for the salsa verde. My thoughts on the food processor for this project, not worth it. So what I'm gonna do instead, because I don't need the onions chopped that fine for the salsa verde, because I'm gonna be blending the whole thing up anyway, onions and all. So I am going to actually switch my focus real quick because it's gonna take a minute still for that tomatillos to get to a point where I can measure them out. So I want to actually get onions on the stove caramelizing because that's gonna take a good two hours. The last time I did this, it was the absolute worst food preservation project flop I have ever had. It turned out horrible. And what I had done was I caramelized probably 20 pounds of onions. I sliced them all. I caramelized them on the stove and I was going to pressure can them and I did pressure can them. And all the recipes said to put a ton of sugar in them. But when you caramelize onions, they are extremely sweet just on their own. So I didn't want to add the sugar because it was like four or five cups of sugar. And so I just pressure canned them without adding the sugar and something happened in the pressure canning process. They were horrible. One of the worst things I have ever made. They were bitter and disgusting. And so I had shared that with you and a bunch of you had recommended freezing caramelized onions. Well, I did a little bit of Googling and everywhere says that that is the ultimate way to get caramelized onions so that you can use them at any time super conveniently. So that's what we're doing. So I'm slicing my onions very thinly. I'm gonna get at least half this box probably caramelizing on the stove so that this can be working for us while we're doing other things. So whenever you cut onions for caramelized onions, what you wanna do is cut them from pole to pole. So instead of slicing them, this is the root end and this is the flowering end or the greens end. Instead of cutting them this way, you wanna cut them from top to bottom. So from root end to flowering end. That way the cell structures stay better intact when you cook them. I'm gonna use both these burners and my roaster pan so that this can go a little bit quicker. We're gonna start with some oil in the bottom of it and one full cutting board's worth of caramelized onions. I'm gonna season this generously with salt and we are in business. This is starting to cook now, now. It's already smelling <laughs> delicious in here. So we've got two projects already started, which is fantastic. The next thing I wanna do is freeze dry a bunch of onions for making onion powder. And I just emptied my freeze dryer. 
I can't actually turn my freeze dryer back on because it needs to defrost because I already ran it two times without running the defrost cycle. So what I'm gonna do is just prepare the onions, get them on the trays. I already have some trays in my freezer, so I needed to empty my freeze dryer, one, because it's done, and two, I need my freeze dryer trays so that I can put some onions on these trays and pop them in the freezer to pre-freeze before we stick them in the freeze dryer. So I'm still working on this project of freeze drying a bunch of goodies for my nephews for Christmas. And so I've got here strawberries, plums, tomatoes. We're gonna turn this into tomato powder today to use as a tomato paste substitute. I freeze dried the skins. You all had told me that I needed to do that. And so I went ahead and we're going to experiment with that today. So these are the strawberries I purchased from a local farm and they already smell incredible. I am using Mylar because these goodies are going to be going on a plane cross country with my parents to my sister and my nephew's house. And this is gonna be the easiest way for them to transport these freeze dried goodies. These strawberries I'm gonna go ahead and put in a jar for us. If you're not gonna store it for a crazy long time, you can store your freeze dried goods in a jar with a good lid on it and that keeps them nice and sealed. These will be gone in a matter of a day or two because they are so good. These are plums from the orchard here on the homestead. And then this bag, I'm gonna put apples. Actually, I think I'm gonna put these in a jar because I already did four bags for my nephews. So I think I'll keep these ones. I just tried one of these plums and I don't know if it was the plum. Let me try a different one. I'm kind of ner nervous to try it now. Okay. That one's really sweet. That first plum I tried was so incredibly tart. It was like eating a warhead. Did you guys used to eat those when you were a kid? We did. Woo! They were never my fa favorite. So here I just put an oxygen absorber in here and I need to write plum on here because you can't see the contents when you use Mylar. I'm gonna put just the month and the year and each one of the bags going to my nephews is gonna get an oxygen absorber just so that these strawberries stay nice and fresh and freeze dried. These are strawberries. I'm so excited for them to open these. They've been asking me to make these. I didn't know that, my sister just told me. I had made them for them maybe like nine months ago or so and they've been asking for them ever since. I would have made them freeze dried fruit and sent it to them before but I just didn't know they wanted them. So let's go get these sealed. I'm just using my vacuum sealer. I'm not vacuum sealing these Mylar bags. I'm just sealing the tops of them so that they stay fresh. These are all going to my nephews for Christmas. If you are interested in a freeze dryer, they are on sale. They have a Black Friday sale the whole month of November and I will link that sale down below. So this is my little stash right here where I'm collecting the stuff that I'm gonna send to my nephews. I have four bags of dried or freeze dried apples. Now I've got two bags of strawberries, one bag of plums, and then the other, the last fruit that I'm doing for them is I have a couple trays of bananas that are in the freezer. As soon as my freeze dryer is defrosted, I can load it back up. The last thing we're gonna take care of is this potato skins. Tomato skins, not potato skins, these are tomato skins. We're gonna get these in the blender. I'm excited to try this. A bunch of you had recommended it and so I couldn't ignore, I couldn't ignore the recommendation. So let's see how this goes.
Oh, it smells delicious. I just had a really interesting thought that would be really good with this. Using this in an Alfredo, like a chicken Alfredo, you could get that delicious tomato flavor you want, like a pink sauce, but without adding a bunch of liquid, like stewed tomatoes or something like that. Kind of like when you would add maybe sun-dried tomatoes, you want that tomato flavor, but you want it to be a cream sauce. You know, I just inhaled it in my nose. This, I, I think I'm gonna like this. So what I'm gonna do, I need to get a lid on it. I think I'm gonna put it right on with my other spices so that it reminds me that I need to experiment with this. The next thing I wanna get done is get some of these gallon Ziploc bags filled with diced onions for easy, easy meal prep. One of my favorite things, I love having diced onions that are just frozen in my freezer because if you're gonna cook them up anyway, you can't even tell that they were frozen. They cook up beautifully. They actually cook up quicker than fresh onions, just straight raw onions into the pot. And so I love having them in my freezer. You can, so if you find onions on sale, this is a great way to stock up on something if you find it on sale. Or if you just want the convenience of diced onions without going through the effort of dicing them and freezing them, you can purchase in the frozen section of the grocery store pre-diced onions, and if that's gonna help you get dinner on the table on nights where you don't have the energy to cook, go get yourself some pre-diced onions from the freezer section. They also sell pre-diced onions and peppers. I used to buy those all the time when I just needed something fast and easy. I would pull a bag of peppers and onions out of the freezer, and that's kind of what gave me the idea to start you know, purchasing local or growing my own and getting them in the freezer that way. So I'm just gonna take, I don't know, probably gonna take me 15, 20 minutes to get, I want at least two of these gallon bags filled, if not more, with diced onions. And I think it's gonna be faster if I actually go ahead and chop, because I'm always trying to look at being a little bit more efficient in the kitchen when possible. I love being in the kitchen and hanging out and just getting projects done like this, but I also like to be efficient. So the idea is I'm gonna chop the tops and bottoms off. You know what I should probably do? Chop tops and bottoms off, just keep getting a bunch of those and then take a minute, peel them all, and then dice them all. So I'm just gonna do that so that I'm not picking and dropping my knife a bunch of times. I'm just So these onions. I've got my onions on the stove cooking. I knew this was going to take probably an hour and a half to two hours. And I've got my tomatillos thawing and starting to cook down. I knew both of those projects were going to take some time on the stove. So that's why I've kind of listed out and I'm trying to tackle other projects at the same time so that I'm not just idle in the kitchen while I'm waiting for those two things on the stove to either be finished, like the onions, or for me to be able to do the next step for the tomatillos, like add the rest of the ingredients. So here, when I was slicing these onions, they were, they had actual dirt on them. So after I went ahead and sliced them and peeled them all, I knew that I needed to really clean my countertops. I needed to wash all the onions and I needed to wash my cutting boards before we actually dice them into their final product because I don't want all this actual literal dirt in my final product. So I'm trying to get the countertops clean and I had a second here, so I went ahead and I grabbed jars out. These are cleaned washed jars just in the dishwasher for jarring up our salsa verde when it is done. Our onions are looking pretty close to being done, but we're gonna let them cook for a little bit longer and our tomatillos are almost ready for the next step. The kitchen is much cleaner. It's actually clean now. I went ahead and swept as well just to get any of the dirt up. Now I wanna get these onions nice and clean because they have dirt on them. I also got the freeze dryer trays clean so that if we have enough onions to freeze dry, we can just put the onions right on there. I need to rinse off all these, or all these, both of these cutting boards feels like a lot. I also want to get some garlic peeled for the salsa verde. The onions are almost done, but I want that pot to 
measure out our salsa verde in. So it's gonna take just a second for those onions to finish and then we can move on to the next step with our salsa verde. It smells incredible in here. I need to get the other side of this one clean. I'm just going to individually wash. I want my onions to drain just a little bit before I dice them so that when I put them in the freezer, they're not sopping wet. So this is the perfect time to move on to take care of these beautiful onions. I hope I really like this, because if I do, I could do twice this amount, but this is a lot of caramelized onions. We love caramelized onions on all the things, in quiche, on pizza, on burgers, and how nice would this be? Because these will thaw, I think, incredibly quickly. But before I can get them in the freezer, I want them to cool off, because I'm gonna freeze them in Ziploc bags, so I don't want them going into the bags hot. So I need to put them on a plate, get them out of this roaster pan so that they can cool quickly and we can use this roaster pan for our salsa verde. So I'm gonna lay this out a little bit thinly so that there's more surface area and they'll cool off a little bit quicker. And now we're gonna go move on to our salsa verde. I'm gonna turn the stove off, but we're gonna use this pot. It just has onions and salt and oil in it and not very much oil at all. So what I'm gonna do is blend this salsa verde up with my immersion blender here. I'm trying to put that on backwards. And then I can put it from here into here as I measure it out. And we need this pot for water bath canning the salsa. So it'll work out that I can get the salsa over here cooking on the stove. I can wash this out, fill it with water so we can can the salsa. An immersion blender is one of my absolute favorite kitchen appliances. And this one's amazing. I can link it down below. It was a gift and it has revolutionized my cooking. I'm gonna need that immersion blender one more time but let's see if I can find, yeah, here we go. But first I wanna measure out and figure out how many batches of salsa we're actually making. So for one recipe, it's five and a half cups. So I'm just gonna count the cups as they come out. That was hot, I got it on my hands. So that was four. I'm just gonna count how many cups we have in here. And then I'll do the math at the end and figure out how many times we are gonna make this salsa verde. That's eight. 12, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 17, this might be unconventional how I'm gonna do this, but I just nestled that in there. I wanna get every last drop out of here because this is my husband's favorite thing I make. Well, probably not my favorite, but one of his favorites. I don't wanna spill it because then I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have lost count. 17, 18, 19, 19 cups. So for every one batch, which is five and a half cups, we're gonna add one cup of onions. So I think what I'm gonna do, cause this is already cooked really well and I wanna get my onions and garlic super tender as well. I'm gonna actually cook them in here. So I'm gonna go measure out my onions. I'm gonna use my pre-chopped onions. These ones that are super thinly sliced because these are gonna cook up fast. And so I'm gonna measure my onions out. We're gonna blend this up too, so it's okay that they're a little bit chunky. 
That was actually the perfect amount of onions we needed for this. I'm gonna turn this back on. Get my onions in there. I need to reference my book again. And one thing you can do is you can substitute lemon juice for vinegar. And I always do that when I make this recipe. The recipe calls for white vinegar and for lemon juice. According to the National Home Food Preservation, it states that it is safe to substitute lemon juice for vinegar, but you cannot substitute vinegar for lemon juice. So instead of using the white vinegar in this recipe, I'm gonna substitute lemon juice, bottled lemon juice, and I don't have lime juice in my house and that's what this calls for, vinegar and lime juice. So I'm just gonna add the equivalent of lemon juice. So we are gonna add 3 fourths cup lemon juice per recipe. And I wanna get all the onions off this measuring spoon into our pot. We're gonna add our washed cilantro, our chilies, some more jalapenos, The last thing I'm gonna add is one whole head of garlic. I purchased this garlic from the farmer that I purchased my extra peppers from this year and my extra onions from. Ah. I'm just gonna leave them whole because we're gonna blend them, but I do need to get the papers off, obviously. Here. So as soon as the onions, peppers, and garlic are soft, then we can move on to the next step. This day is just working out perfect with different things aligning for the next task. So while that's simmering away, I'm going to go ahead and dice up these onions for the freezer. This doesn't quite look like enough onions for me just to dice and put in the freezer for frozen and for freeze drying. The freeze drying onions I'm going to turn into onion powder. The only onion powder I have in my house right now is red onion powder from last year's onions. I still have probably about a pint left of that. So I'm gonna prioritize freezing these onions and then maybe a different day if I don't have enough to freeze. I do have some onions on some freeze dryer trays that were bolting and they needed to be used up or they were gonna go bad. So maybe when I go clean downstairs from the onion harvest and I, I wanna hang some of my onions up, then maybe that's when I will tackle that project if I don't have enough here. But we'll just see as I dice them up. I'm dicing these to the size that I would like to have for in recipes. So just kind of like a small, medium-ish dice so that they're the correct size when I go to cook with them. And you do not need to blanch onions when you freeze them. I've had absolutely beautiful success just dicing them, throwing them in a Ziploc bag, and then pulling them out. You will find yourself, or at least I should say, I find myself pulling those out all the time because <laughs> it's just so convenient. So I'm already sitting here waiting for my salsa to cook. Might as well tackle this project. So when I need to get dinner on the table quickly, this is one less, one less task I need to do. I think what I'm gonna use are my bag holders. I'm gonna reuse the bags that had the tomatillos in it because they just had washed tomatillos in it. No need to have those go to waste. Could use silicone bags too. I just don't want those getting the onion flavor in them because I think the silicone bags might grab onto some of that onion flavor. Well, maybe we'll have enough to freeze dry because I want to get two, at least two gallons frozen. Gonna check on my salsa. Okay. I think this is done, actually. I'm gonna turn it down and let it simmer for a little bit longer. I need those peppers to get soft. I feel like these onions are becoming exponential. <laughs> and so I think we're gonna be able to get some freeze dried for sure.
I'm gonna put these in my inside fridge because I will go through these relatively quickly because if I have these made up, they will get used. Diced onions is one of my favorite things to have on hand. And it's even better when they're from the garden or from a local farmer. Our onion seasoning mixture is done, so we can get this in with our tomatillos. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess or burning myself. So we wanna get all this mixture in with our tomatillos because this has all of our lemon juice and our garlic and seasonings. So now I'm gonna go clean this pot because we need to use this to water bath cannon. I wanna get all this mixed together and then I wanna give it a taste test to see if we need to adjust any of the salt or add a little more lemon juice if it needs a little bit more zip to it. We use this salsa verde for salsa that you would with chips and salsa. We use it for green enchiladas. We use it as a sauce for burrito bowls. Oh my goodness. That is so good. It doesn't need anything, I don't think. It's got a good zing to it. The salt is good, the heat is good. There is a little bit of heat to it because I left the seeds in, but that is Phenomenal. I think Josh is going to love this. Let's get this jar up. I'm pretty proud of this. This is all either homegrown or locally sourced minus the salt and lemon juice. So big accomplishment in this pot right here. Ah. <laughs> Let's get this jarred up. I do need to finish washing that pot and getting it on the stove to start warming. I like to can my salsa verde in pints because that's how much we go through when I make salsa verde or green enchiladas. And I don't like to do it in quarts because it's just too much for Josh and I. I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve pints out right now. I did not have to can any red enchilada sauce this year because I canned enough of it last year, so that was kind of nice. From all that I jarred up last year, I only have two pints. So I think that between those two pints and this here, that is gonna be more than enough to get us through the year. It's amazing to me how the small tomatillo harvest throughout the growing season really produced a ton of salsa verde. We had four plants out there, but really only three of them produced anything. And when I would harvest tomatillos, I would only get a handful at a time. I think maybe at the most I got 20 at a time, but mostly they were coming in, you know, two, three, five, ten here and there. And I would peel them, wash them, throw them in the freezer. And I had some in my garage fridge and some in my inside fridge. And I just not realize how much those small, tiny harvests really added up to create quite a bit of salsa verde. So I'm super pleased with this year's harvest and it has me rethinking. I was thinking I was gonna plant like six or seven plants next year, but maybe I don't need to. Maybe I could plant four plants this coming year, 2024, and we will get more than enough. So I have to think about that. Now, I have come to the conclusion that I don't, I must have donated my water bath canner, so I've been using this pot and I love that this is a double use pot now. I can use it to make stuff and I can use it to can in. And so I'm totally fine and love canning in this. I did get a rack that goes in the bottom of this. It's a rubber rack. I didn't have it on this day when I made this, but next time I water bath can in this, I don't have to use a towel because I have this rubber rack that I can put in the bottom of this pot. That worked out absolutely perfect for getting one load of jars in there and I can process that once it comes up to a rolling boil for the proper time. I have to look at my book. I think it's 15 or 20 minutes, but I will double check in my book. So once it comes to a boil, I will set my timer. I had one more of these tomatillo bags that was still good. The other one ripped down the side. So I figured let's use this Ziploc bag for one more bag of diced onions. 
And that way I can just use this bag up and I'm not throwing it away. And then the rest of the onions here, I'm going to get on two freeze dryer trays and we'll get those frozen so that I can process those into onion powder. Now what I'm gonna do for the onion powder is a little bit different than dicing the onions because I'm gonna be pulverizing these onions. I do not need to dice them finely. I'm just going to run my knife through them enough that they fit on the freeze dryer tray. I'll leave the, tr the onions a little bit on the thicker side. I could probably even leave them a little bit thicker than I did there. You don't want anything to come up above the tray. So I can, you know, have them be a quarter of an inch or so. That one is a little thick. You wanna be able to get them in the actual freeze dryer and the food doesn't bump up against the top tray. But because I'm going to turn these into onion powder, I don't wanna take the time to finely dice them or anything like that. And this homemade freeze dried onion powder, <laughs> the flavor on it is incredible. It's so good. Homemade dehydrated onion powder is really good too. If you have a dehydrator, just don't make the mistake I did. Make sure when you dehydrate onions, you put your dehydrator in the garage or on your back deck or wherever you can do it, but don't do it in your house. It will really stink up your house. I did it with, I dehydrated onions in my, in my dehydrator in my laundry room. Everything that was in my laundry room had to be rewashed because it all just smelled like onion. No one wants their clothes. As much as I love onions and I do like the smell of onions, I do not want my clothes to smell like onions. So that was a, oops, try not to do that again. Oh, this works really well actually, just cut it in half like that. So instead of slicing like this, like I was doing, I'm just slicing it like that. And I think that I can get even more onion on each tray. Now, when I run my freeze dryer with this, I'll be able to have not only red onion powder, but I'll be able to have white onion powder as well, which will be nice. Okay, I officially now have all the onions processed that I peeled. I still have a ton of onions downstairs in that I harvested. And so that's gonna be a whole different project. But for today, we have conquered a lot. So in the freezer, this bag goes. So we got three one gallon bags of onions and I am thrilled with that. I'm just gonna take a second while I'm in the freezer here and organize it. I've been slowly cleaning it out. And so I actually can have everything organized. Perfect. How I have it organized is I have one section with doughs, like pizza doughs and pizza crusts and um, pie crust, and then I have nuts, and then I have vegetables. Now I have onions and fruit over here, and then a meat section. So just trying to keep it a little bit more organized. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was at the beginning of the growing season. So I'm gonna go put the toppers on these and get these in the freezer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get these caramelized onions packaged up. I'm doing about a half a cup in each bag or so. And I want to freeze them flat so that they thaw really quickly. So we'll probably we'll get two more out of this. So that's five total and I'm really excited about this. That will exponentially give me a convenience item. On a day I maybe would want caramelized onions for a burger or pizza but would not have the time to do it. I could just pull one of these out and they were cooking the whole time I was making the salsa verde. So I was really able to get two pro big projects done basically simultaneously today in the kitchen. Well, we got more than two, but two projects on the stove, I should say. Plus all those diced onions. So I'm gonna say we got three big projects done today simultaneously. So I've never done this before, but what I've read online and from you all in the comment section, this works really well. So we got five baggies in the freezer. I'm gonna freeze them completely flat so that when I go to thaw them, they'll thaw really quickly because they're so thin. For oh no. We're gonna say they process for 15 minutes. I see one that, oh, I thought 
thought it broke, but it didn't. It was just tipped over on its side. It must have been boiling a little bit too hard there. Whew. This was one of the last things I would want to explode because I only got these. Well, I'm happy about it. We got two. I haven't even counted how many we got yet. I think this is gonna be the perfect amount for Josh and I for one year. So that's good for planning for next year. I had three plants out there and they didn't produce as much as my other tomatillo plants have produced in the past. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 pints and one half pint. Well, that was a fantastic way to spend this afternoon. I already have dinner done. So we can go ahead and relax for the evening. So friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we got 2023's Salsa Verde accomplished. I am very proud of that and very excited to have it on our pantry shelf. Josh already gave it a taste test and said it was a 10 out of 10, which is fantastic. It's not too spicy for him. I always kind of worry about that just a little bit, but he loves it. And so we are gonna use that to make all sorts of yummy recipes. Oh, I even use it in things like chili, like white chicken chili and stuff like that. So if you want to watch a few of my other videos between now and my next upload, I can pop those right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here along the journey as we planted the seed, we planted the plant, we harvested the tomatillos, and now we have made it into salsa verde. And coming this fall and winter, we will turn it into a ton of different yummy dishes. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.